Emmanuel Macron of France is joining Mike Bloomberg tomorrow at the Global Business Forum. Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister, global leaders, including yourself. Uh, as Mike himself said, this forum intends to address the most pressing challenges confronting the economy and prosperity around the world. I'd like to know, as a CEO, as a global leader yourself, what concerns you most? Well, I think uh, what the mayor is doing, Mayor Bloomberg is doing, is bringing together the different perspectives to try to address, as you just reported, the key important issues. And we've got important issues that really are best solved by all three groups coming together, uh, government leaders, business leaders, and also NGOs. And whether it's really the idea of inclusive growth across our country and the world, or whether it's fo focusing on issues like climate, it's right to have all three of these perspectives in the room, and the right person to be clinking the glass is Mike Bloomberg. Would you say that those are the two most pressing issues, inclusive growth, whether it be here in America or elsewhere, and climate change? I think in the developed world, inclusive growth is the main issue. Uh, all around, if you look at the larger major economies, we have this issue, Eric, where the average isn't the right description. On average, things might look pretty good, but there are a large number of our citizens who are not doing as well as we would like, and we have to think of the right public policies combined with the knowledge and understanding of business and NGOs to think about the right way to solve those issues. There's, we have to have inclusive growth. There's nowhere near enough consensus among politicians about what the priority should be. Do you feel as though there is a consensus among business leaders? Uh, I believe that business leaders, A, accept the, the idea that inclusive growth is, is appropriate and required and morally correct. And I do believe that business leaders are interested in working with government to whether it's public policy issues on, on training, uh, education, and things like that and also figuring out the right safety net as we work through this period of transition. We're going through a change now. We've had three really big changes for the move from an agrarian economy to an industrial economy, and now we're moving from an industrial co economy to a knowledge and information economy. And do we have the right skills so that workers can be successful? Let's talk about that knowledge and information economy. A number of CEOs, including Mike Bloomberg, Jenny Rometty of IBM, uh, John Kryan of Deutsche Bank, have flagged technology and its power to replace jobs as a huge risk. Vikram Pandit only last week told us that Technologies such as artificial intelligence could wipe out as much as 30% of the jobs in banking. Is finance as you've known it for 40 years that vulnerable to technology? That seems to be a bit dramatic to me. I'm not an expert, but I think there's no question that the rate of change is accelerating. Uh, we learned in calculus that the second derivative is the rate of change of the rate of change. And I believe that's accelerating. And so now businesses have to position themselves. You're seeing business models change, whether it's Amazon and Whole Foods, GM investing in Lyft, uh, um, and all these types of things going on, uh, Walmart, Jet. So business models are changing, and finance is no different. Um, and, and how this unfolds, we'll have to see. I'm a bit more optimistic that we'll create new opportunities that are a bit unknown today, and, and that's what, how I think about it. How will your business be different five years from now? Well, I think that our business is we're a professional services company, and so we're providing advice to companies. Our real goal is to help companies be successful, and today what you just said is what companies are interested in. When I started in business, technology was seen as a vertical, and people understood about applying technology to an issue. What's happened, Eric, is the vertical's been knocked over and technology is now a horizontal going across all the business. And so people want to talk about that, and that's what we're trying to do. We recently had a former colleague from Goldman Sachs join us, Rick Sherland, who's been a software analyst for decades and knows the industry better than anyone. What he's helping us do is meet with all types of clients to talk about how this is changing their business model. Uh Perella Weinberg bought Tudor Holt Pickering mm -hmm. to gain a big foothold in the energy advisory business. Do you anticipate doing more deals like that to expand your firm's expertise and increase its footprint? Well, uh, let's first of all take a second and, and just uh, recount. So last November, we combined with Tudor Pickering and Holt. Uh, basically, this was a firm that started about the same time as our firm did, focused on energy and all types of energy um, in both advisory and asset management. 
Putting professional services firms together is complicated. The two issues are business fit and culture. The good news is that uh, Bobby Tudor and Maynard Holt have been partners of Peters and mine at Goldman Sachs. We knew Dan Pickering, so the culture worked perfectly. On the business side, energy was an opportunity for us to improve, and Tudor Pickering brought those skills. Perfect fit. I think going forward, we'll consider things like this, but we didn't wake up today saying this is the way we want to grow. It requires a special fit and someone that we really feel comfortable with, in particular from the cultural perspective. Specifically in asset management, that deal gave you about $13 billion in assets. That's still tiny in an industry that nowadays seems to value scale above anything else. How do you compete? So I think, first of all, let's say we're, uh, we've been in business for 12 years. From a standing start, we have $13 billion. Okay, let's put a tick in the box for well done. Uh, now we're growing and expanding our business, and we're doing things that are really, I think, more skill-based, we like to think about, whether it's pr growth private equity, or whether it's helping endowments and foundations with outsourced CIO businesses, or having liquid market strategies and private equity, all those things. And we feel like our $13 billion is a good start. We'd like to grow more energy now we have the skills as you suggested and so it's a matter of step by step continuing to grow and the key focus isn't our size the key focus is the success of our clients and our investing results Bob people keep wondering how long it's going to be before Perella Weinberg goes public so listen, they should wonder. Uh, I think that um, the great news is that Joe uh, Perella, Peter Weinberg, and Terry McGee started this firm 12 years ago and have put it on a great arc. Our, our capital structure is not important to our business model. Uh, our goal is how do we serve our clients. We're not thinking today, there's no one working on a prospectus at our shop. Our goal is to focus on our clients. We're certainly at the scale and size where we're similar to many companies that have gone public. If that's the right thing to do for us executing our business model, we'll get in line. If it's not, we've got lots of choices on how to organize our business.